In the midst of the flood event, we were going up by like two feet an hour. This event started on uh, Thursday with a whole lot of rain coming. About 10 o'clock that night, uh, we get a call from the Weather Forecast Center out of Pendleton. They were seeing more rain coming into our basin that previously hadn't been forecasted or predicted to be in our area. So at that point, about three and a half inches of rain had already fallen and so the ground is completely saturated and any additional rain that we would get would come off completely off the mountain as well as bringing snow. So at this point, while there is no frozen ground, we are getting a substantial amount of rain. So it now becomes a rain on snow event in this basin. We begin diverting water into Bennington Lake so that we can provide as much flood protection to Walla Walla and the vicinity. It just passed the 96 flood and it's still going. Uh, you know, that was probably the real key point where I'm, I knew yeah, this was, a, this was a serious event. We were seriously getting into uh, flood diversion. There's a lot of water coming down Mill Creek and we're starting to divert a lot of water through town. We're during the middle of the day, uh, there's folks out in the field everywhere at all the bridges, uh, things like that, and they were still pushing a lot of water through town. You know, now we know we have an additional amount of water coming to the project and we need to make some adjustments from a water management side. And so ultimately, we uh, begin to allow more water to pass through town uh, so that we can preserve space in the reservoir and we can balance how much water is in the reservoir versus how much more water needs to go to the reservoir that's potentially coming down, down the river. We have to make decisions as the water management team. We are now seeing what we know to be the record flood to come through the town or as potentially to come at the Mill Creek project, but um, our reservoir is already 50% full due to water we've been diverting all day on February 6th. Friday uh, evening, we continue to have people monitor the levees up until midnight that night. And it's at midnight that the flows have receded to 2,700 CFS. And it's as fast as that the rain came on, the event is over in close to 72 hours. How do we respond to floods? It, these are really some of the same things we do on a daily basis. We just do them a lot faster in the midst of an emergency event like this. Probably for me, the biggest thing that I can do even in the midst of an event like this is making sure we got the right people, making sure they got the resources they need to get their job done, and then really staying out of their way and letting them get their job done and just supporting them. That event was done, and uh, at the same time, we're still looking at the rest of the surrounding communities. We're you know, starting to get the call for technical assistance. Uh, emergency management is you know, keyed in. Uh, you know, community all around us is asking for technical assistance, and it's one of the things that we have the ability to do. So everything on the project worked as designed. We had great response from our uh, engineer partners at the district office, project operations staff and maintenance were on scene, uh, managing and reducing the risk of flood for the city. Post-flood operations are occurring where we have constant communication, we have communication plans in place, update plans, and it's important to be able to really speak to what we're doing to the community and to the public and what we're doing here to help mitigate risk of flood damages downstream. So without the project here, we may have seen upwards of 6,000 CFS going through the city of Walla Walla. And from what I understand, that could have potentially inundated about one third of the city.